Hello and welcome to the Business Today show. I'm Udayan Mukherjee. My guest today on the show is a lady who hails from a very reputed business family. But over the last few years, she's had the task of reinventing her family business completely, which she has done very, very competently. It's the old house of Kinetic, which every Indian business viewer should be quite uh, conversant with. And would also know, therefore, that they went through their uh, enormous share of troubles uh, in the two-wheeler business uh, over a period of a decade. But over the last few years, uh, they have reinvented themselves and placed themselves at the forefront of the electric vehicle revolution, uh, which is sweeping across India. So it gives me great pleasure to welcome Sulajja Ferodia Motwani from the House of Kinetic, Vice Chairperson of Kinetic Engineering and CEO of Kinetic Green Energy and Power to the show. Sulajja, wonderful to have you on the show. And uh, would you could agree that it's a fair assessment that it's a complete, uh, you know, reinvention or a rehaul of the house of kinetic that you've had to do over the last four or five years. Well, I think you put it across really well. Uh, we have reinvented ourselves. Uh, we went through a very uh, massive restructuring, some of it voluntary and uh, very positive. Some of it was very difficult, uh, but I'm glad that we have been able to uh, complete it successfully, come out of it. Uh, with all our group companies growing fantastically and with kinetic green really you know as the center of it as uh, with the new in a, in the new sunrise sector which is the ev uh, disruption and we are very excited about the future and looking ahead with it to it with a lot of optimism and excitement mm. but how convinced are you sulaj about this uh, ev issue because when one speaks to many of the old timers and the large players in the two wheeler industry, they sometimes would scoff and say, or, or look a little amused saying, you know, all this excitement about EV, but that's not going to happen in the next many years. The traditional uh, two wheelers will remain very much the dominant players and three wheelers too. And EV might be exciting from a market point of view, but from a consumer point of view, it will take many, many years. Do you disagree with that assertion? Do you think the EV revolution will come upon us much sooner than we can see it today? Well, I think that the EV revolution has already come upon us. Um, six years ago, when I started Kinetic Green, uh, it was not so fashionable to be an EV company. Now, of course, it's quite fashionable um, and quite, uh, you know, uh, let's say, quite exciting to be in this sector. But when we began, there were definitely more disbelievers than believers. Uh, there was no policy, there was no clear uh, supply chain, there was no market, there were no consumers wanting to buy EVs, uh, there was no technology, and batteries were very expensive. But even then, I had a conviction that there is a disruption that's coming in the auto sector. Uh, the world is going green, and whether it's energy, whether it is uh, any other form of business where sustainability is being embraced, and the younger generation who's looking at climate change with a, you know, as a very serious issue, I think green uh, automobiles or green mobility was going to definitely going to be um, something that was going to sweep the world. And I think five years down the line, we are seeing that this is actually happening. And I think now there are definitely more believers than disbelievers. And in certain segments like two wheelers and three wheelers are what you can call the light mobility or the small vehicles where the movement is mostly intracity. And you don't need a lot of charging infrastructure. I think there already EVs are beginning to make a great impact uh, because it is affordable. It is in fact cheaper for the customers and they don't need a huge charging infrastructure. They can charge their vehicles at home. So there's a much higher level of adoption, which we're already seeing. So I think we can comfortably say now that we are at an inflection point. And over the next five to 10 years, we will see a massive uh, penetration of EVs especially in the light mobility or the intracity segments like two-wheeler, three-wheelers and buses. And interestingly, India is a country where these three segments dominate the transportation sector. So unlike the West where 80% people are using cars and 20% people may be using buses and two-wheelers, in India, 80% people are using two-wheelers, three-wheelers and buses. And only 20% people are using cars or you know long-range trucks, etc. So in India, I think we will see a massive infiltration of electric vehicles in the next 10 years driven by these intracity vehicles, uh, where already EVs are nearing parity or they already are at parity and uh, the movement is going to be very rapid. Mm. So 
If you're that confident, let me ask you to stick your neck out and say in the next five years, not two or three years, in five years time, what percentage of the two-wheeler market will be electric vehicles, uh, uh, electrically driven? Do you have, can you hazard a guess? Okay, well, um, instead of only sticking my neck out, I can take uh, support of the reports by expert uh, research agencies who have been looking at the sector here and globally. Uh, looking at the movements and i think what is projected is that over the next let's say over the next 10 years for the next five years over the next 10 years about 70 percent of india's three wheelers will be electric uh, and they, it would be as high as 50 percent over the next five years and interestingly this year itself 25 percent of the three wheelers in the country are electric uh, driven by this whole e-rickshaw movement where three wheelers have electric three wheelers are dominating the last mile connectivity. So already we are seeing 25% electric three wheeler penetration. Coming to two wheelers, which is sort of the largest segment in India, uh, it's India is the world's second largest two wheeler market. And here this year we have just crossed one and a half percent. So we're at about one and a half to two percent of the total two wheelers being electric. And it is expected that over the next 10 years, about 40% two wheelers will go electric, which is a very large number. And I think over the next 10 year, five years, it will be around 15 to 20%. Again, in a market where we are selling about two and a half crore two wheelers, you're looking at very large volumes. And I believe that this could even be faster because especially for scooters, which are used by people for intra-city, again, urban movement. I don't see any reason why five years down the line, anybody would buy a non-electric scooter. It will just be so much cheaper to buy electric scooter and there will be no fuel cost. And the ecosystem is now evolving rapidly that it would make all the economic sense for, for consumers uh, to go electric. So I'm very bullish. And I think this is driven by economics, no longer just by rhetoric. Uh, people are going to save money and they're going to be able to use these vehicles. There'll be many more models available. And the ecosystem for charging, battery swapping uh, is also evolving along with now the whole, uh, uh, let would say, policy framework. So I think overall it's going to be easier for people uh, to adopt this and you know it in India I know I always say jo dikta hai, wo dikta hai. Mm. so as more people buy EVs more people will it will lead to more people buying EVs there will be positive word of mouth and uh, they always say that in India people talk about only three things when they meet yeah. it's either films or cricket or automobiles so when the word of mouth uh, builds when one person gives a favorable, favorable report about his EV experience to another 10 group of 10 friends it will lead to more adoption so I think it will drive. It will drive itself through positive word of mouth, positive experience, and uh, better economics for the consumers. There was one stumbling block earlier, Sulajja, which was the price point, the price of the uh, electric vehicle. How much of uh, that problem is gone now? Because you know we keep hearing about various price points. Earlier, we heard that there will be an e-bike or e-scooter being launched at just under 1 lakh rupees and that created some excitement but do you think when the new crop of launches come like the electric luna later this year from your stable do you think the price point would have come down very significantly so that it's that is no longer an issue you're competitive against the traditional two wheelers already right so this is a very interesting question because uh, the market's evolving in very interesting ways uh, let's see that after bs6 has come the price of the traditional uh, let's say scooter, just to take an example, you know, within moped, scooter, and motorcycles, scooters uh, has gone up to around 85 to 90,000. So one can buy a, a popular scooter used by the whole family for around 90,000 rupees now, um, which used to be around 75,000, you know, just two years ago. Further fuel prices have gone up. So people are now spending more than 100 rupees a day, you know, to run that scooter. Now come to the world of electric. Uh, what has happened, happened is that in electric, two, two, uh, I would say uh, important trends have emerged. One is that there is this whole category of mid-speed scooters. That means scooters with the speeds of 45 to 55. And then there is the high-speed scooters, the scooters with speeds of 75 to 85. So for smaller towns, like let's say a Bhimavaram or a Aurangabad, you know, or a, a Bellore, uh, the tier two and tier three towns, people are quite happy using vehicles of 45 to 55 speeds because people don't move at much higher speeds. The distances are shorter. There are no flyovers. And these 45 to 55 scooters, uh, speed scooters, are very affordable. They are available at between 60 to 75,000 rupees with a lithium-ion battery in it. So you're spending less to buy the scooter and you're spending almost nothing to run it. 
Now come to the high speed scooters, which you need in big cities like Bangalore and Hyderabad and Pune and so on and so forth, where people have to move at higher speeds and there are flyovers, etc. These are available around 1 lakh to 1 lakh 10,000 electric scooters. So you're paying just a small premium upfront compared to 90,000 yeah. scooter, but then you're saving on the fuel cost. So the TCO is still very attractive. So it's now beginning to sink into customers that we are not paying much more for electric vehicles. This is also supported by the government's fame to scheme subsidy, uh, where uh, almost uh, you know, a large part of the battery cost is currently subsidized, which is enabling this. So for the next two years, I think the economics will drive uh, with the help of the subsidy. And we are all hoping that after two years, battery prices will have come down because of mass production, the cost of components in India would have come down. And further, new ideas like battery leasing, battery financing, battery swapping will make it affordable for people to continue buying electric scooters even when the subsidies go away. So I think that the price parity equation is now has arrived. And uh, once people experience it, I think uh, you know it will be something that will be uh, accepted, uh, you know, not only in the pre-subsidy, uh, pre but even the post-subsidy world. So I think price is no longer going to be an issue again for the light mobility. It's so, going to be an issue for some time for the cars and you know the larger vehicles. Yeah. And therefore, I think that the growth in the short run will be in the light mobility sector in two wheelers and three wheelers. So uh, give us a sense of, even a ballpark sense of how the electric Luna will be priced when you launch it in the next few months. Yes, so we are very excited about this product. Um, just a little bit about Kennedy Green's journey. We began our electric vehicle journey uh, through electric golf carts and electric three-wheelers. And this is because we had a non-compete with our erstwhile partners, Mahindra, um, you know, till 2019. So we did not enter the two-wheeler sector till the non-compete was over. Yeah. Um, and after successfully entering the three-wheeler sector and entrenching, getting entrenched and reaching 100% localization levels, uh, last year we have entered the electric two-wheeler sector and we have launched uh, two scooters which have done very well in the market and now in uh, 20 to 23 we are planning a rapid expansion in the electric two wheelers uh, segment two wheelers of course are close to kinetics heart that's what you know we are very passionate about but when i was growing up uh, when we would drive on the streets all we would do is look at other two wheelers on the street and count the number of kinetic scooters on the road so you can imagine how attached we are to this segment and even within that, Luna is the most special product. It is what we began, yeah. Kinetic began his journey with. So we are bringing this really fantastic product called the E-Luna or Luna EV. And uh, this is aimed to be a price leader in the whole segment. Uh, it will be a modular uh, delivery oriented product. Uh, the entire delivery or utility segment is emerging very rapidly with this whole emergence of food delivery, grocery delivery, uh, you know, 15 minute groceries at doorstep, uh, Swiggy, Zomato, et cetera, et cetera. And I think this new trend of uh, home delivery is here to stay, even in the post COVID world, even after COVID goes away. So e commerce is really spurring it. Plus, you have a large market of small town where people are using two wheelers for their livelihood. So, we will be really focusing on this kind of utility segment. It will be a modular vehicle with many kind of different applications of it uh, for delivery and for commuting. Um, and we are aiming that uh, along with the lithium ion battery uh, and a range of about 100 kilometers, uh, the vehicle should be priced very attractively. That is affordable to every consumer at around 45,000 rupees is the target price, which in fact is 10,000 rupees lower than the counterpart in ICE segment. And ICE moped is today costing 55,000. So we intend to come up with a 100% Make in India product with every part, including the smallest screw in the vehicle being sourced in India, 100% homegrown kinetic EV and uh, a price dealer in the segment. I think it's a disruptive product. There's no other product in this segment. And who better than kinetic? Uh, we know this segment very well. So we are very excited. It should come around September. Is the plan. Time for a quick break on the show, but we shall return with Sulajja Firodia Mothwani in just a minute. Don't go away.
From Deepika being a jury to her busting the glass ceiling of critiques for movies, Cannes is dressed all new in its 75th anniversary. The timing of it is also ripe as it comes right after the pandemic has watered down and with Ukraine Russia at war. Even Zelensky made his presence felt in this edition of Cannes. So what films are everyone hyping about this year? The film festival will kick off with Final Cut, which is a remake of a Japanese movie. It is about a horror film shoot that goes wrong when zombies invade for real. Known for his cult classic The Fly, Cronenberg returns to Cannes with Crimes of the Future. The story takes place in the near future where some humans have accelerated evolution while others try to police it. Known for his Palme d'Or winning movie Shoplifters, Corrida returns with his new film Broker. Broker is about two men who have taken a child from a baby box where parents leave infants they cannot raise. Holy Spider is a dark drama inspired by a true story. The movie follows a female journalist who's trying to track down a serial killer in the Iranian holy city of Mashhad. The serial killer kills sex workers in an obsession to cleanse the streets of sinners. This film is a Ukrainian debut about a female prisoner of war's difficult return to her home. Well, there are more movies of course. Special screenings of a few movies are worth mentioning. Shonak Sen's All That Breathes is said to have a special screening. It will also be the only Indian entry at the 75th iteration of Cannes. Welcome back. You're watching the Business Today show. I've been in conversation with Sulajja Firodia Motwani, who's affecting a remarkable transition and turnaround at the Kinetic Group. Now, how will you pit yourself against some of the big boys in the field? Uh, and I ask this because, you know, you would have had a history of combating with these uh, people in the two-wheeler market, traditional market, uh, when you were trying to switch from mopeds to motorcycles. But the Hondas and the Bajaj were far ahead of the game. You will be up against the same players in the EV two-wheeler segment as well, today or tomorrow. The same Hondas, the same Bajajes, even the new digital players like Ola who are getting into the space. How do you assess your chances for this uh, versus these larger and better capitalized players? Sure. So, again, it's an amazing question you ask. And I think that this time around, there is a lot of, um, I would say, um, um, it's a different marketplace, right? First of all, uh, EV is a new disruptive segment. It's a sunrise sector, which where we are early movers. Uh, every segment, there are the learnings, whether it's product development, customer market, financing, production, cost structures. And we've been working on the ground for the last six to seven years. So we really have understood a lot more nuts and bolts of this sector. Um, secondly, it's a segment where uh, it's going to be disruptive, like how landlines went mobile, I think, you know, it's going to be very rapidly evolving in this direction. And speed and agility is very important. Now, here what happens, Kinetic Green is a pure play EV company. Um, so we have the uh, an asset light business model, which is designed just to be perfect model for EVs, where our costs are low, our break-evens are low, we can do distributed manufacturing closer to the market. Um, so the entire company is built around this EV business model, which is asset light, full of passion, um, EV oriented product designs, whether it is light weighting and so on and so forth. So in a way we are like a startup in that sense that we have an asset light EV oriented business model and no legacy, no conversion from existing to new business models, no existing investments, no cost structures, no mindset issues. So we don't have the baggage of a legacy company and we are like a startup. But in another way, we are also like a large OEM with a pedigree because we have the brand Kinetic, which is very much loved and recognized by every Indian which gives us a lot of reliability, credibility when compared to the startups. And secondly, we also have the experience of making, uh, developing products, scaling up automotive businesses, setting up supply chain, distribution chain, service, spare part, warranty, which may be difficult for some of the startups. So we can be, we are a company which can scale up. We had the pedigree of an OEM, but we don't have the baggage 
of converting from an existing to a new EV uh, business model. So I'm banking on this unique business model of kinetic green plus the first mover advantage. And I also believe that now capital is much more available, you know, than it was uh, a decade ago. Um, so I think uh, kinetic green so far, of course, we are promoter funded. We have been running our business uh, as a tight ship uh, on a conservative uh, basis, uh, making money, building step by step. But now that we are ready for a massive expansion, we grew 5x this year. We plan to grow 5x next year. We are looking to raise a significant amount of capital as well from the markets. And uh, I think uh, to that extent, you know, capital is no longer uh, the only determinant factor. Today, it's not going to be the scale, but the agility in the EV space that's going to be important. Earlier, it was a global scale, global platforms, you know, large investments, huge factories, uh, which allowed some of the yeah. players to scale up to an extent where others couldn't compete. EV is a different marketplace altogether. Today, the largest companies, value creators like Amazon, Tesla, and so on and so forth, Google are all asset light. So it's no longer only an asset game. I think it's an asset light business model and passion of EVs that will drive the future success. And I think it's a strategy or it's a marketplace where new heroes are going to be born. And that's why Tesla is the world's most valuable automobile company. Mm. Now, the Indian domestic market opportunity is one we have spoken about now. Uh, but how big is the potential in the export market for Indian electric vehicle manufacturers. I ask because you've got a very interesting joint venture with Lamborghini, but you'll get technology from them and you're going to produce golf carts and campus vehicles for them. Could that turn out to be a big opportunity, make in India and export electric vehicles as well? Because we always keep talking about getting EV technology to India to produce for the domestic market, but not the other way around. Yeah, so we are so excited about this joint venture because exactly as you said, it's the first time that an Indian made EV will be you know, brought to the export market. So I see our business you know, in a way that we are a light mobility company. So an electric three wheeler really is our bread, you know, which is sort of, you know, which will drive the day to day business. It's a stable segment, we're already present. Two wheelers is the butter because that's where the scale will come from. But golf carts is the jam because that's the segment which will take us to the global markets um, where the margins would be uh, much more attractive and it would lead to a completely diversified uh, portfolio from the more India focused two and three wheelers. So in the golf cart, JV, basically the whole idea is that uh, the vehicles are de designed in Italy uh, by the designers at Tonino Lamborghini. So Italian uh, sensibilities, absolutely differentiated styling. Uh, the vehicles are engineered in India. Um, and then they will be sold globally uh, through a global network of distributors where we can leverage the Lamborghini brand as well. So the vehicles could be branded, would be branded as Tonino Lamborghini with the Lamborghini logo. And that would give it a very premium kind of a placement in the market. Um, and the kind of segment golf carts are their most status and prestige and, you know, um, uh, lifestyle driven, I think this kind of this brand would really excite the consumers along with the differentiated design, the top spec that we're coming up with, and we would have the make in India advantage. So for this uh, segment, we have a completely separate joint venture company, which is being formed uh, with its own independent team. And in 2022, we plan to actually launch the vehicles in the global market in a step-by-step -step manner. And this would be pretty predominantly export oriented venture, whereas two and three wheelers would have a larger domestic uh, focus. And eventually there would be an export strategy as well, but in the short run, it would be predominantly domestically focused. Right. So uh, what does Arun Ferodia, your dad, have to say about all this, this uh, reinvention into an electric vehicle play? Because he's you know, cast in the old mold. He's the old quintessential two-wheeler man. Does he share your excitement about uh, this two-wheeler revolution, the EV revolution that you're talking about? So my dad is actually a technocrat. You know, and I have met very few people in the world who are as intelligent, you know, in, 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 in the way he is, and he's amazing. His his his, um, his vision, his ability to think to technology is just mind blowing. And he has been a supporter of EV all along. So when we started Kinetic Green, you know, uh, there were many other people who said, you know, this is like, you know, uh, as you said earlier, you know, nothing is going to happen. Uh, and the EV have, EVs have been around for decades, but nobody buys EVs, et cetera, et cetera. But he supported me from day one on this venture. And not only within Kinetic Green, but over the last four to five years, he has also been persuading 
the other group companies which are into automotive systems in kinetic group to also develop their own ev strategies finally sulaj i have to ask you this because when we were growing up i mean this the jingle of chalmeri luna was such a thing in our heads when you launched the e luna in september do you think you will you can incorporate that or want to incorporate that chalmeri luna back into your ad campaigns once again because that's something which is in the head of so many indians i mean it's such a wonderful memory though though the brand will come in a reinvented avatar today yeah so um thinking about this um staying up at night you know thinking about how we are going to bring this luna and how we are going to position it um how we are going to make it reach the right consumers uh, because you know the luna is actually meant to be um i would see kinetic always believe in bringing comfort and convenience to consumers you know and that's what led to revolution whether it was luna for mobility for common man kinetic honda for women it gave brings of brings of freedom to women so when you are able to do something which truly improves lives of the citizens that's when the you know brands and the products therefore become successful and even in the past kinetic was never the largest two wheeler company mm. uh you know when competition of the other companies but it always had a very special place in people's heart and the brand was always larger than life and i think when i when we bring e luna into the market we had this legacy you know um it's a positive burden definitely when i use the word burden uh that uh, we have to once again do something which again adds a lot of value to people's lives and um, builds on this positive sentiment of chalmeri luna safalta ki sawari uh, so we are thinking about it uh Piyush Pandey from ONM had helped us launch Luna with the Chalmeri Luna slogan. Um, I did give him a call. I said, "Look, we are doing this. Um, you know, do you want to come on board?" Is thinking about it. Um, but we would love to work with the best brains in the industry to really do justice to this brand and the potential it holds. So whether it's Chalmeri Luna, but it whatever or what it will be, it should. I hope okay. that it will once again create the magic for the Indian consumers. It's wonderful Sulaja to see what you're doing with the reinvention of the brand and I wish you all the best. Congratulations for the turnaround and uh, we wish you all the best with uh, the launches over the next few years. Uh, may Kinetic be a force to reckon with once again. Thank you very much for your time today. Pleasure talking to you. Thanks a lot.